Good morning and uh, welcome to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. It is Friday, March 12th, right? Did I get that right? Yep. Okay. And we are looking at um, H183 pertaining to sexual assault and consent. And uh, we have attorney Michelle Childs with us to review draft recommendations uh, from House Government Operations regarding the council. Uh, that is that is in this bill. So given time, I'm gonna give it right over to Michelle. Um, thank you so much and committee, thank you for coming early and adjusting your schedules and your flexibility. So welcome, Michelle, good morning. Thanks, good morning. Evan, can you give me uh, the ability to share my screen? Okay, let me see if that's not the right version. Sorry, been having a little bit of trouble with screen sharing lately. Um, Are we draft uh, 1.1? 1 .1? Yes. We've got it on our computer. Can't we just go with it on our computers for now? Sure. Yeah. Although, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, great. So it says at the top, draft recommendations from House Government Operations, draft 1.1 from this morning. And I'm going to go down to the uh, Intercollegiate Council and talk about the changes that they're gonna to discuss today. So they had a committee meeting yesterday and I walked them through the whole bill because um, they wanted to understand the context. And, um, and then they had discussion about uh, some tweaks they wanted, but they haven't, I just met with the chair um, about an hour ago. And so uh, they had, the committee hasn't seen the changes yet. Um, so you'll see the first one, first changes are in the membership. And you recall the earlier draft, the draft is introduced, had a Title IX coordinator from every institution of higher learning appointed by the Vermont State Colleges. Um, and their suggestion was, and they had all the college folks in the room with them getting their feedback, is they wanted to go with a Title IX coordinator and a campus-based prevention education coordinator from an institution of higher learning appointed by the chancellor at Vermont State College, then the, say, you know, then the same folks appointed by the University of Vermont and then the same folks appointed by the Association of Independent Colleges. So instead of, I think, I can't remember the number, but there was something like 11 or 13, there was a lot of people that were encompassed in one and so they've kind of whittled it down. And I believe all the witnesses were good with that. The next change is on the top of page seven in subdivision six. So you, you had in there that two college stu uh, students appointed by the Center for Crime Victim Services and House Gov Ops wanted to um, kind of detail the, that out a little bit more so that of the two college students, at least one of whom has lived experience as a sexual uh, violence survivor and one who represents a campus-based racial justice organization. Um, Michelle, on, on uh, yep. the page top of page seven, uh, the amendment there. Say uh, so one. It, it's been detailed more for a sexual violence survivor, a, a college age. I'm assuming um, sexual violence survivor. What happens to a situation like that when you can't um, find somebody to to fill that position? Um, I, I got to believe, you know, especially at a young age. Um, a lot of people may not be willing to come forward with their experience, um, you know, go public with it, I guess. And, uh, but anyway, it could, it could be any of the positions. What happens if there's nobody to fill it? Um, I haven't really run into that situation where people haven't been able to fill a, a position that they had authority to appoint to. Um, I can tell you that 
this language that I that you have, I worked on with uh, Sarah Robinson from the Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, and she was supportive. So I don't think they had any concerns that they would be able to identify um, or someone. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't want to just. Is it okay to? I just don't know if you can see my hand raised. Is it? Yep, okay I can see you, yes. Selena. Yep. Um, I really, it's not a question for you, Michelle, just to Tom's question. I just wanted to, I think it's a good question, like what happens if you just can't find the person. But I will say the previous task force, uh, finite task force on this issue that I served on, we had, I think it called for at least three um, college age survivors of sexual violence, and we had no problem finding folks to step up and come forward and just, just just for your just to I mean I I was gonna say to comfort you but that's probably not really a comforting reality but you know what I'm saying there, there was, <laughs> yeah people the people were there were more than enough people to fill more more roles with that criteria in a previous right yeah yeah and just coming from from uh you know from my world you know whatever whatever that may be, it just seems like it, it could be a um, potentially uh, tough spot to, to fill. But um, yeah, again, you know, you use the word comfort and, and I want to say that it's good that you, but not meaning that it's good that you, you know, that people are stepping up. It, um, thank you. Okay, next change is in subdivision nine. Um, and so you had in there a prosecutor um, and they wanted to uh, clarify that it should be a prosecutor with experience in prosecuting sexual violence cases. And, um, and then they put in the AG as the appointing authority and Rory was in that committee meeting and he was good with that. So that's what their recommendation is. And then the last one is uh, subdivision 10, which is an attorney with experience in sexual violence cases appointed by the defender general. So those are the recommendations for the membership. Um, subsection C, subdivision two. Um, this is just a small uh, word tweak and I probably shouldn't have highlighted the whole thing, but before it said an annual review of uh, climate surveys and I had, uh, had to move on to another committee. So I didn't hear this testimony, but I guess some of the colleges said something about, well, we have all this information and whatever. And so the, the change is just going, going to more like reviewing the data that they have. Um, and if you need more information about that, I might have to have you speak with either one of the Sarah's because I'm sorry I wasn't in the room for that discussion. And then the last change is uh, that the council meets quarterly. And again, that was that was recommended by the colleges and the other witnesses supported it. Can you remind us had the I'm sorry for just jumping in, but had had the bill been silent on that or were they said yes more regular? Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the suggestions. Does anybody have anything you want me to take back to them when I go in there later this morning? Um, <coughs> if you in a minute, to, I, you know, it, it, it seems reasonable to me. I, I like the fact that they, um, you know, have just the, you know, the one representative from UVM and from state colleges. I, I was concerned that it was getting quite large and wheeled, un, unwieldy. So I think this does, does make sense. Uh, and, and Sarah and I had talked about the attorney general as the appointing authority. That makes sense as well. So, uh, Tom. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, get, I don't have any, any issues with any of these changes, but I'm gonna go back to the, the kind of the question that I had before. And it doesn't matter if uh, any specific, uh, it, it could be any of the uh, appointees uh, to, the, to the panel or study or whatever. And so, what happens if it doesn't matter? I'm not talking about the, you know the sexual assault survivors. What happens if there's somebody that can't be appointed to a position? I gotta, I gotta imagine that the a study group goes on anyway, doesn't it? 
with oh, just yeah. one last member? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't ever happen, but I've been here for 20 plus years and staffed a lot of these committees and I never, never saw anybody having a hard time uh, finding somebody to appoint. Right, right. It, it, and that's kind of what I figured, but I, I would hate to see something come to a screeching halt just because of. No, and that's not, no, if somebody doesn't do it, there's no, um, there's no enforcement mechanism. There's no like, you can't move forward, right. whatever, you know, sometimes people are late in appointing people and, or they appoint people and the person shows up one every four meetings and, you know, that kind of stuff, but sure. it just is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I guess I just didn't have can't enough. make people do this stuff. <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. No, I just didn't have enough experience with it, I guess, to know. Um, you know, but kind of an in the weeds question, but <laughs> all okay. right, great. Thank you. So I, I just got a text from um the chair of Gov Ops, and she says, I'm so sorry, but I forgot to suggest a sunset for the council. That's best practices in our committee to trigger a revisitation of councils created to be sure they're still useful. Can we please add a sunset after seven years? So before I do that, I just want to run that by you, see if you are okay with that. And then I'll, I'll draft it up onto their amendment and then they'll review. And then once we meet at lunch, I can incorporate it in. But yeah. so seven years, that's interesting. So that must be, is that I'm assuming they use seven. I think years. that that's their standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I defer to them. I mean, it's fine with me if that's. Um, I, I, it does make sense to make sure that that uh, councils, commissions, whatever, are still relevant, and seven is their number. That's fine with me. If committee members want to join in. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. I mean, it seems like a long time to wait to see if a council's working well, but I defer to them too. I'm sure you'll be, you know, one of the primary things that the council is supposed to be doing is making recommendations to you for anything. So there's, I would expect that council is going to be in communication with the general assembly. And so lots of time, not lots of opportunity to kind of check in with them. Um, so, okay, so I'll add the sunset. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. Okay. Great, all right, thanks. And so you'll get back to us, you know, during, during lunch or Yeah, so. so do you want to set a time? Because I also, um, I have a bill in the Senate that is trying to get voted out, but they're waiting for recommendations from two other committees. And I don't think they're gonna finish up. So I think they may have to vote a bill over the lunch hour too. Is there a time that you wanna kind of book me for that so that I can just kind of hold that space for you? Um, yeah, so what's your window is between 12 and 1.30 you said? Or? Yeah, I guess I'm finishing up in GovOps at 11.45, so maybe, give me till 12 15 to incorporate their changes into your draft okay yeah and no, i was thinking of i was um thinking of later what um can folks remind me if there are things going on during the lunch hour like either workshops or caucuses or anything that folks the women's caucus is from 12 to 1 and okay. i have a different meeting scheduled at noon but i can be flexible and moving around and prioritize i i moved I was gonna say I moved my nine to 12, but I probably. Well, let's do one o'clock then. It sounds like, it sounds like be... one o'clock, right? It works for me. So well, Evan, will you just send me like a half an hour of the meeting notice for one o'clock? Great, on, on 183 and yeah, and then I'm still planning on coming back 15 minutes after the floor this morning, unless it's at, you know, like 12 or something like that, but I don't, I don't think we're gonna be on the floor that long. So, um, okay, great. And then, so- Can the I ask a quick, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, you have a question, I'm sorry, go ahead, Barbara. So I know the network is uh, struggles with resources as a nonprofit. Will they have adequate resources to cover the staffing and expenses they'll fully need to do this? If they get the appropriation, <laughs> I mean that's that's my understanding. 
Uh, and, and they're they're asking for what it will cost them or were they given a number that they could have? They picked the number. What? They picked the number. Okay. All right. And um, Michelle, can you help us understand um, when our legislative council staffs, um, you know, some commissions and 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 not others, and because um, I, I, that question has come up and it might come up again as to to why um, Ledge Council um, is not staffing this one. Um, there's no legislative members on the committee okay. on the council, and yeah. we are your attorneys. Um, you can't. Really just like farm us out to people um, who aren't our clients. Um, you know, it, it raises issues around conflict, um, you know, because if, if I was staffing that and then they are coming to you with recommendations and it's not coming from any of my clients, um, then I'm kind of, I'm proposing something, you know, that they're advocating and kind of lobbying you on essentially so right. okay no thank you i think that's helpful and i think it's important for for us and others to to understand uh, appropriations is is aware of this and the other appropriation in the bill they do have the the language in the sections uh so so wait, can i ask a follow-up to that yeah. so michelle if there was if there was one or two legislators on it does that, I mean, I'm just curious, does that affect it or would that still be the same situation? It's because still the same. I mean, if the if the vast majority of people on there are not our clients, I mean, it's really, you know, I mean, you can imagine it's a- Right, I just was trying to figure out- A lot where the, of committee, a lot of study committees, a lot of stuff like that. If, if we just became everybody else's lawyers, I mean, we just were a skeletal staff as it is in terms of serving 180 members and we have plenty of legislative studies that uh and committees we have to do during the interim so it's just you know there's not like a hard line there but it can't just be that you can throw on a couple sure and sometimes i know to a, the AG's to a 14 office. member pardon right. sometimes the ag's office has sort of offered up people for certain summer things or um not that I'm saying they would in this case, but that seems like the other resource that's been popped up in my time on judiciary, at least for work committees. Right, right. Well, we'll see what appropriation says. And that's, well, and then take it, take it from there. Um, so, okay, great. Right. right. Thanks. Yeah. See so, you in a little while. Yeah. Thank you. And um, actually, so Michelle, but everything else in the bill, we've got that updated draft, right? Because nothing else is. I haven't changed anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. So same thing. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. All right. Well. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm seeing faces that I hadn't seen before. Uh, Coach actually just got his his vaccination, so he but he does it. I know, um, and he thought he would have better um, service where he is, but doesn't. So that's why he is not with us right now. So, okay, so uh, so Barbara, your hand is up. Um, is that from before, or or do you have a question or comment? Hmm. Not sure. All right, Ken, I see your hand up. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> the, uh, okay. Washington State Attorney really involved. What happened? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, Am I messed up again? No, no, no. I just can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the Washington or Rory had a big hand in this uh, 183, and I should have jumped on this before. Is he also is he okay with these changes? Changes meaning what House Government Operations? Well, this amendment. 
uh, with this amendment of what they're changing? So I, I did Michelle say whether or not they were in the room? I'm not sure, and I'm not sure how how that piece actually impacts the um, the state's attorneys. I think the only section that um, of the study really would be. Um, that they're weighing in is the appointing authority. There is a section on um, whether, you know, somebody, let me let me get it, but basically whether the um, appointed by the AG's office or the state's attorneys and house government operations is sticking with um, with the attorney generals. But I, I would think Rory would be okay on this. And the, the rest of the changes that they made really are more relevant to, um, to uh, higher education. So I think that, I, the main part that Rory right was, and so I, I, yeah. I go ahead go ahead go ahead no I, I, I cut you off so go ahead <laughs> I'm just more concerned about the so UBM has got all kinds of of kids up there and, and different type of kids and everything but the university that I'm looking right at right now I mean, might fall into a different mat, sir. Smaller so, state colleges might. Yeah, that's just some of my concerns. I thought up too late. I'm sorry, but no, 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 no. And if, that is why um, it, I don't have a problem. Yeah, my my understanding from what Michelle just said is that that the um, representatives from the education educational institutions were there, and there is a um, an organization actually. Kimberly works for it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up the, but anyway, Barbara or somebody, but but anyway, they represent all the independent. Of, yeah, Vermont Association of Independent Colleges. I think it's right. Called, right. I didn't know Kimberly worked there. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so um, so my understanding is that they were in the room. So I so I think I'm there. So I think I'm hearing two different concerns. One is about the institutions, right? And then one is about um, the state's attorneys. So I think in terms of jurisdictionally, the institutions, that, that's where House Government Operations was looking at, um, at the educational institutions. And, um, and House Government Operations and our education committee have been in, in contact and decided that House that Government Operations was the more appropriate committee to look at this council. I don't know. I don't know if I'm answering your question or if I'm confusing. No, <laughs> no, you did. I just hope. I, just, I can check. Yeah, I can check obviously in. Obviously, North University. University. Um, yeah, I can check in with. I can check in with Rory. I'm. I'm and. Yeah, uh, Selena. I think too. Um, because there's two appointees of each college type, there's a the Title IX coordinator, which is like a very focused role um, for you know when formal complaints um, come forward. And then there's I can't remember the language, but there's the um, someone who's doing more of the kind of prevention and outreach work on the campus so that for each college or university type, there's the possibility of at least two appointees plus the um, two student spots. And so it's, it's pretty similar makeup at this point in this way to the task force that I served on. And it did feel like a real mix of like, you know, every college wasn't in the room for sure for all things, although there was nothing, there were public meetings and stuff. So there was nothing, like sometimes people who weren't members of the task force still came and participated in the discussion and gave testimony, but it did feel like a really strong mix of folks of a mix of like state colleges, and independent colleges and UVM and students from all over. And it seems right. similar, really constructed this one. Right, thank you. And I just note that also Kate noted that Rory was um, was in house government operations. So yeah, so I I I think that'll, you know, he will be in that and what um, house government operations um, has come up with um, does look reasonable. And I think in terms of um, the other part of the bill, Rory certainly was very involved with um, and I thought his testimony was very helpful yesterday. 
Um, so in terms of this, this bill, I would like to vote it out today. Um, we're not gonna do it this morning because we need to hear back from government operations. Um, I did mention before we went on the record and I will mention it now on the record that we did receive a letter uh, dated today from Mad Freedom um, with uh, signed by Wilda White who we've been working quite a bit with who has asked us to postpone our vote. Um, on the bill until she can testify. And uh, I think she has some, um, some concerns that I, I do think we addressed yesterday. However, um, what I'm thinking, and I will ask committee's members to think about this, um, given that it's crossover, I would like to vote this bill out today. Um, so it can go, you know, to meet one to meet crossover. And then because it does have appropriations in it, it will it will go to appropriations. And so next week, um, you know, we can, we can hear from Wilda, we can look at these concerns and then, um, and then if we wanna make an amendment or whatever, uh, we can do that. But uh, at least I, I very much value her, um, <clears throat> her legal expertise and, and do wanna give it consideration. So um, just, Throwing that out there, I'm seeing Barbara nod. Yeah, and others. Yeah, um, like that approach. Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I, think, I mean, I would, I would be unable to really support this bill unless we look a little further at this particular issue. Uh, you know, I, I've been reading reading the letter that we received from Man Freedom and and agree that we need to give it some more consideration. But the bill is really, I think, very important. It's very close, and we need to pass it out. So I think we should move it on to appropriations and hopefully next week. And, and I, I don't think it would just be mad freedom, but we probably want to bring in disability rights. Absolutely. Mother, yeah, so have, have kind of a full vetting of the particular issue and, and see what we can do to modify the language. And right. Right, okay, all right, so that's a, uh, thank you, Barbara. So, okay, let's see. Um, so if we do that, which sounds great, is there any way for us to post that so people don't just see that it got voted out and feel like they didn't have a Like, how can we make sure Wilda or others that wanted to weigh in don't feel like we didn't, we weren't responsive to them in the short, you know, until next week or whatever. Well, I'm I'm going to respond to her as soon as I can. Okay. Yeah, and I also will share her test. Her testimony is posted. If not, um, it will be. And I also will share it with Rory um, and Disability Rights um, as soon as as soon as I I can. Assuming my multitasking skills. <laughs> um, but but no, absolutely, I will I will let her know and then. Talk to our colleagues. Yeah, yeah. Um, Selena, I have an F thirty five overhead, so sorry if I get drowned out. Um, oh boy. Uh, so uh, yeah, we could also just one other thought. We could post a draft agenda for next week sooner rather than later, even if it's not all the way full, filled in, and we know it need to needs to change. But that just signals like you know that we intend to have some. Um, committee time with these with these witnesses yeah thank you no that's a great idea and generally um we do get the agenda posted on on friday so yeah i think tuesday afternoon at 1 15 we're back in here on on this with um with wilder rory david share <laughs> disability rights yeah um, I'd see if Ann Donahue wants to know that hopefully things have freed up a little bit for the health uh, care committee to see if Ann wants to weigh in as, as well. Okay, great. And hopefully, Evan, you're hearing this and we'll go over this later. But okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm watching the, the time for the floor. And then uh, when we so, um, so we'll get back after the floor. And uh, we've got 145. And then we'll have 183, and then forfeiture. Hopefully, we'll um, we'll have you talk about that, and see where we are. All right, great. Thank you, everybody.